What is up everybody? Welcome to Visual Timmy Illustration. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this animation. So in this tutorial, I'm going to walk through how I made that animation, show you the, the frames, show you my canvas settings, and show you the order in which I did everything. So to start off, I'm gonna bring up my canvas information and we are in a 2500 pixel by 2500 pixel square canvas. Over here, make sure you have animation assist turned on. You can see all of my frames stacked one on the other. I'm going to go ahead and solo the most bottom frame. To solo a frame, simply tap and hold on the checkbox and it'll mute all other frames and turn on the frame that you're selecting. Just like that. So I started off with this little sketch. I sketched out the little UFO, sketched out the heart. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do with it yet, but I knew that I wanted the heart to be bouncing around with the UFO. So I created a layer at the very top and used it as a foreground layer. This foreground layer, I made all of these little tick marks to tell me exactly where I wanted the heart to move. In order to do this, I simply made a line the full distance that I would like the heart to travel, mark the center point and the end points, divided those in half, then on the furthest mark, divided those in half again, then on the new furthest mark, divided those in half again, and then once more, divided those in half. And that's gonna tell me where I need to put my frames. First, I inked it out in black, and then I would select the heart three fingers down to copy, add a new frame. I would paste the heart on that frame. Then I would select it to move it to the next position. These center dots line up with these lines to let me know exactly how far I need to move it. I repeat this over and over and over and over again until I get the heart actually bouncing up and down. While my original sketch is set to background layer, AKA it's the very bottom layer right above background color, I'm able to see the outline of my original UFO and heart. Doing this allows me to trace over these lines in each subsequent frame to make the UFO animated. By tracing over the lines multiple times, there's gonna be slight variations in each stroke that you make. Cycling through each frame, you're able to see a little bit of wiggle happen between each of the frames. While the heart is going up and down, you can see that the UFO has a little wiggle and it kind of gives it a little bit of life. Following this, I duplicated the project just to be sure I wouldn't mess with any of my uh, original animations. And I dragged black from the color picker down onto the page and filled up each layer's background with black. This gave an illusion that the UFO is the only thing lit up on the canvas. Then I simply used these little red dots as markers to make little shooting stars. Frame by frame, I would draw a little more tail on the star and the star moving, and then slowly disappearing, breaking up, and being gone. I then cycled through and found different spots that I wanted to include these stars in. Shooting stars, asteroids, whatever you'd like to call them. And then I continued on to the next portion of the animation. I added these highly transparent broke it up lines to simulate the roundness of the beam coming from the UFO. I slowly marched these along like little ants between each frame casually skipping frames to show the effect of possible flickering from the UFO beam. Moving on to the shine going across the UFO's dome, I simply drew a couple lines and then slowly shifted them each frame until they exited. Since this shine animation only lasts about 10 frames, it doesn't exactly repeat at the same speed that the heart is, since the heart is the full amount of frames. 
This gives an added dimension to the animation so everything is not moving on the exact same time frames. To exaggerate this effect, I added some small lights that rotate across like a marquee on the UFO. You could see them passing through. All I did was create three dots and just shift them over one point each time. By the time it gets to the end, I pause for a few frames to imagine that the light is going behind the back part of the UFO disc and then returning back from the left side. So when you play it, you get something like this. To then export, all you have to do is open up your actions panel up here, which is the little wrench. Come over here to share. And then you have the options down here that says share layers. So you can export many different ways. You can export each frame as its own PNG file that you can import to another program. This is called uh, PNG sequencing. And you can also export as an animated GIF, or if you wanna upload to Instagram, make sure that it's set to looping and then upload an animated MP4. I personally like to export a GIF at high quality, a GIF at low quality to upload to sites like Giphy, and then an animated MP4 at high quality so that I can use it in video editing and do things like this. I do wanna mention that this animation is 15 frames per second. While drawing, I used onion skin frames set at two so that things didn't get too cluttered. And the onion skin opacity, I left pretty low, somewhere between 20 and 40 so that I could make sure to see the original background layer more than the previous onion skin. That way, my UFO wouldn't randomly grow by the time the animation is finished. I wanted it to make sure it stood true to its size and shape. And I make sure that mine's always set to loop because that's usually how I like to export things, especially GIFs. When making sure that your animation's going to loop, you want to think about the starting position of all of the items in your animation. Because if the starting position matches up to the ending position, then it will loop seamlessly without jumping or cutting to the next frame. So as you can see here, I'm starting at the very center and I'm moving up in the first frame. So what I wanna make sure is that by the time I get to the last frame, I've already gone all the way down and I'm just before the middle again so that when it starts from frame one, I'll be able to jump straight into the beginning of the animation seamlessly. So it goes up, back down till it reaches the very bottom and then it heads back up and that's where the animation ends so that it can start back right on square one and then continue to loop through. So thank you for watching. I hope this helped you out. If you have any questions or special video requests, make sure to leave them down in the comments. If you are using any of my brushes for your animations or illustrations, be sure to tag me. I love to share them to my stories and use hashtag Timmy brushes to get featured on my page. Thanks so much for watching and I hope this helps. Thank you.